So thank you so much for the invitation uh, to the workshop. And uh, I can say that I've learned quite a lot about uh, partnerships. Uh, most of what we are doing in Maseno is uh, very informal. There's nothing formal about uh, uh, the kind of partnership we have uh, with students. Um, so just a bit of background um, so that we put things into context. Uh, I work in a public university, which is funded by the government. Um, and our funding is very, very uh, tight. Um, and uh, the college raises money by basically uh, enrolling more student, students. Uh, and uh, the number of staff uh, being hired uh, is very low. Like in my department, we've not had new hires for the last uh, 10 years or so. Um, and we've increased enrollments from 2000 to now it's uh, 6,500 uh, in the university. So um, things are really, really um, uh, challenging uh, at Maseno. So um, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, we are severely understaffed. Um, the student to lecturer ratio is quite high. Um, the facilities we have uh, for teaching were uh, constructed to deal with small numbers of students. And so uh, they're not suitable for these large numbers. Um, our libraries are not very well equipped. And so most of the materials we use are open source uh, um, resources online. Um, and on the part of the student, um, they rarely get feedback. Uh, whether it's in uh, uh, lecture notes, um, assignments, uh, because it's just impossible to give feedback to that large number of students uh, for a single lecturer. Um, so some of the uh, interventions we've had to deal with the, these challenges have been uh, um, uh, having the blended approach to teaching and learning. Uh, we have uh, a well-established uh, e-campus, uh, and in my department, we've been uh, giving courses online as well as uh, teaching first to first. Um, and now one of the um, benefits of uh, the digital uh, revolution is that there's a ton of uh, resources online. And so we make use of these um, open books, uh, YouTube videos, uh, and through eCampus, we have uh, the discussion forums where uh, we normally communicate to students. Uh, even though nowadays most of them ignore the online forums uh, in, in the e-campus and they prefer uh, communicating on WhatsApp, which can be annoying sometimes. Um, from 2019, uh, we uh, started using Stack uh, to give a formative assessment. Uh, and it's been uh, pretty interesting. Uh, in many ways. Um, one of the ways is that uh, uh, authoring questions is primarily done by uh, the lecturer teaching the course. And because we are overwhelmed with the work, um, you normally author questions as we give them to students. We don't have time to uh, do quality control uh, of the questions. Uh, we don't have someone to come and assist. Uh, we've been lucky that uh, IDEMS, which is uh, a an, uh, not-for-profit organization in the UK, has been uh, supporting us. Uh, but without their help, we would have been uh, really, really in big trouble. Um, so some of the questions we give, um, and this is one of the best features of Stack, is the randomization. And this has really encouraged um, our students to uh, do the quizzes multiple times uh, so that uh, they master the concept. Um, and it's been one of the best um, outcomes of Stack, I should say, because uh, before students would waste a lot of their time um, on WhatsApp or on social media, uh, doing their own bunch of stuff. Uh, and as one um, a presenter highlighted that uh, instead of um doing uh things which are not academic related now we have cases where students are spending time um 
doing questions um, on their free time. And because the only way they can access these questions is on their phones. Uh, those are the devices they're using. So uh, we've had a lot of engagement between students helping each other uh, doing their homework. Um, and uh, before you would give a homework because it, uh, there was no, uh, like it was just uh, either multiple choice where there's no variation in terms of uh, input, uh, or you could give a takeaway a written exam. And there was a lot of uh, copying. Uh, you will have one person do it and then almost everyone duplicates it. Uh, but with the randomization, um, it brought what I call positive cheating, where instead of copying an answer, uh, you sort of copy the methodology of doing the question and do it uh, yourself uh, using um, uh, the method you uh, learned from your colleague. So this has been one of the positive outcomes um, of using uh, stack for assessment, uh, in my view. So um, the authoring process uh, is that um, uh, the lecturer conceptualizes uh, the question, he authors the question, um, and then this question is given to students through uh, quizzes. Uh, and because there's no time of doing anything, there are lots of mistakes uh, in the questions. Um, if you don't do the randomization uh, properly, uh, then there are lots of errors which uh, can result uh, from uh, uh, improper randomization. Sometimes uh, the feedback can be incorrect or the worked out solution can be incorrect also. Um, and if the question is not properly conceptualized, uh, then it doesn't make any sense. Um, and these are some of uh, uh, the challenges students have been encountering. And uh, one of the informal um, a partnership we've had with students in Maseno is that uh, uh, they are so quick to point out some of these mistakes in questions. Um, and this feedback is what's been helping us um, to improve the authored questions. Uh, and one of the forums in which uh, students um, uh, relay uh, the feedback to us, as I mentioned, it's WhatsApp. Uh, and there's so much, um, sometimes there's so much uh, feedback coming in that filtering becomes a problem. Uh, but uh, we've had, uh, at least in my view, um, I've not had any bad experience from students like complaining uh, there's this error, uh, that uh, the homework has been inappropriate. Um, so I've not had uh, so much of those complaints. Uh, and one of the unexpected consequences that uh, sometimes if you have a wrong solution uh, to a question, uh, you'll have a student attempting the same question multiple times uh, and asking me why my solution is different from theirs. Uh, I had a case where a student, uh, I think it was in complex analysis, where uh, I, I, there was a mistake in my uh, teacher answer. And so anytime students who are attempting uh, the question submitting, they were getting, um, uh, they were being marked wrong, even though their solution was right. And they were doing this multiple times and wondering why uh, my solution was different from theirs. Um, so this was one of the unexpected um, outcomes because it encouraged students to uh, attempt the question multiple times. And also, um, on a lighter note, uh, in class, I told them that sometimes the teacher is not always uh, correct, uh, that uh, feel free to correct uh, the teacher if you feel uh, the teacher has made a mistake. Um, and this also helps um, students with the confidence that uh, they can approach me even if they have a wrong answer and they think it's uh, correct, that it can be a point of discussion. Uh, that I think my answer is correct. Uh, I think yours is wrong, even though they are wrong. Uh, so um, where did I make a mistake? Uh, and so that has brought a very good uh, uh, engagement, communication between me and my students. Um, IDEMS has been supporting us all the way uh, from 2019 or even up to now. 
And what they've done is that uh, uh, some of my students who uh, I think I taught them from 2018 and they graduated uh, uh, two years ago. So uh, I then recruited four of them uh, to help in uh, uh, authoring questions for lecturers. Um, lecturers don't have the time to author questions, but at least they can uh, write the questions down. They can write the questions and the solutions. Um, and so the interns who are, um, are trained in authoring staff questions, and they've been of great help um, uh, in terms of supporting lecturers in de developing those uh, resources. Uh, the interns have also been uh, trained in uh, supporting uh, lecturers in monitoring um, online activity so that uh, if a student asks a question and uh, sometimes the uh, lecturer is not available, you'll have a, uh, one of the interns um, uh, giving feedback uh, to that student online. Uh, and so um, when students get feedback very quickly, it motivates them to, um, uh, to keep on working that uh, uh, if they ask a question, it will be responded to um, uh, pretty fast, and that supports their learning. Um, so uh, the interns take care of authoring the questions. The lecturers review the authored questions to check that uh, they are correct. Uh, they review the solutions that they are properly um, are written. Then uh, these questions are given to students in terms of quizzes. Uh, students also are encouraged to communicate back if there's a, a mistake in the questions, uh, how to fix. Uh, if there's an area they are struggling in, um, if we can have more questions um, to support that particular concept so that uh, it's supporting their learning. And this has been a very good uh, a communication between lecturers and students, um, at least in my view. Um, some of the future plans uh, and uh, these are limited by uh, the financing we get. Um, like uh, Juma is uh, my master's student and he's been giving me a lot of support um, in terms of my uh, teaching um, of the students and sometimes giving assessment. But this is not formalized because uh, he's, he's able to do that because of the support items is giving um, to him so that uh, he can give his free time uh, to support uh, uh, my work and the work of other lecturers. But uh, one of the future plans is to have a, a structure in place so that uh, some of the postgraduate students um, are involved in uh, development of some of this content uh, like stack content, uh, development of um, the online courses, uh, which are offered uh, through the blended approach, um, and even giving tutorials to uh, the undergraduate students. Uh, also, uh, one of the plans we hope, uh, and this is if we succeed, is uh, to have a structure so that uh, some of the senior students, uh, say in their fourth year, uh, can um, can support the undergraduate students uh, in terms of um, uh, giving tutorials, uh, helping them with the, their homework. Uh, if there are concepts they've not understood, uh, getting support. Because uh, at the moment, I'm one lecturer, and in most cases, I'm given classes between 500 and uh, 1,000. And alone, I cannot give them that one one to one um, uh, support. But if you have like fourth year students helping me in my first year course, uh, say um, calculus or linear algebra, then uh, I believe that uh, students will get uh, uh, better assistance. We'll have um, uh, better feedback uh, being given to students. And sometimes students feel comfortable communicating to their peers than to lecturers. And we hope that uh, this is one of the avenues where uh, undergraduates like uh, in their first years can really open up to their peers in their, uh, in their later uh, years of study. Um, 
initially we had the graduate assistantship program of which I was one of the beneficiaries, but because of uh, the funding problems that was uh, stopped a few years ago. And so um, we can only have this uh, through external funding. And um, that's a project which uh, I'm keen to, um, to work on in the next few years. And um, partnership with students, as I mentioned, is something which we are doing uh, in a very informal way. And I'm keen to learn how this can be done in a more formal setting uh, so that uh, we also benefit more uh, as uh, lecturers, uh, because if something is done in a structured way, if we have a knowledge of how it can be done properly, then I guess uh, and I believe that uh, um, both students and uh, lecturers can get more out of um, uh, the partnership. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, some of you uh, can uh, help us or can support us uh, in uh, uh, getting those structures done uh, at Maseno. So thank you for your time. Unless uh, Juma, maybe you can um, say one or two things. Um, well, this has been quite a very interesting experience, uh, like I like Mike, Mike just mentioned, especially in uh, co-working with uh, with him on, on various uh, projects that uh, we are mainly supporting uh, the use of stack here at Maseno. I guess pretty much he has mentioned everything. Uh, I would just like to conclude with the final slide, which uh, is also a Hindi word saying uh, "asante sana." In English, it means "thank you very much." Thank you, everyone. Yeah, asante sana to you. <laughs> Karibu. Oh, thank you. Karibu. <laughs> Karibu is to say welcome. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm sure now we kind of have an impression that we in maths have a good expertise on student staff uh, partnership. And I'm sure Michael and Yuma that we will be able to kind of working together, kind of help you also with your kind of student staff ratio to improve. And thank you. So if there are any brief question for Michael and Yuma? Um, none have come up at the moment in the chat, although there is one ha hand raised. Claire, do you want to say your question? Yeah, um, um, I'm wondering if um, if you have any issues with attendance. So I also have used uh, a different tool, which is Numbas, um, but this year attendance was very, very low. And I also wanted stack, but we were not able to acquire stack in our university <laughs> in Exeter. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I was wondering if, um, if you know, if uh, also you saw an improvement of the marks, and if you have used um, stack for summative assessment, and um, yeah, I could have lots of other little questions like that, but um, because I also have a blended approach, I, I teach a second year, but I was wondering in your experience, how did you see the transition with your blended approach? Um, uh, thanks for your questions. Uh, I think they are very, very good questions. So one problem we have is attendance, as uh, you point out, like, um, in a class of 1,000, I normally split it into three classes. So I teach like three separate sessions uh, and I expect to have like 300 students in each at least. Uh, but in most cases, I'll have less than 100. And my hope is that uh, um, they'll be engaging with the content uh, online. Uh, one of the reasons why we also have poor attendance is because our teaching halls are just terrible. Uh, so students would be like, why should I come to class where I can't even uh, benefit from the uh, from the hall? Uh, like they can't hear the lecturer, sometimes they can't see the board. Uh, and that's why uh, our attendance sometimes is very low. Um, and that was one of the motivations of going the blended way, because if someone can't benefit from uh, being in class, uh, they won't lose entirely. Uh, at least they get something online. Um, 
and uh, I'm able to monitor uh, the work they are doing in the assignments. Uh, the model I use is that I have two quizzes each week. I have a mastery quiz, which a student can do uh, infinitely many times uh, so that they, they master the content. Um, and then I have a test quiz, which they only do once. Um, and I can, I'm able to look at how they engage with the master quizzes. And uh, this is very encouraging because um, on average, uh, each quiz is attempted like two or three times, uh, which is extremely encouraging. So we've had uh, a marked improvement in uh, terms of performance, but uh, there are so many issues, as you mentioned, because um, you can't completely control yeah. cheating. We may have to finish this off in the chat if that's all right, just so we start to schedule. <laughs> yeah, I, I set you off when I realized we're low on time. Yes, yeah, so I think they gave us as a fixed point is five o'clock. We need to finish at five o'clock.